this church, the Church of Christ, or in Filipino, the Iglesia Ni Cristo, strictly upholds the biblical teaching that, after having heard the words of the Almighty God with faith, those who would enter this church, or would be members, so to speak, should first undergo genuine baptism. But we are often asked these questions. What is the significance of true baptism? And what does the Bible teach concerning the correct manner or the right way of baptism? Brad, let's focus first on our first question. Why is genuine baptism very important? Well, it's important because the Lord Jesus Christ Himself commands that baptism be administered on all who would become His disciples. And we can read about that in the book of Matthew. Dear friends, let me read it to you. Here in chapter 28, the verses are 19 down to 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. It is a commandment of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ Himself, that those who are to be made His disciples, in other words, those who would become true Christians, friends, they need to be baptized. But is it enough that one finds just any religion, just any church that practices what it calls baptism and then asks to receive that baptism and then that's it? That person is automatically included among the true disciples of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ or among the true Christians? No, it's not. And we've already proven this during so many of our past uh, studies of the Bible. We need to make sure that we find first the true church where we can receive the true baptism in order to become true disciples of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. But according to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who should be baptized? Well, once again, we have to turn to what he says, and this time we read from the book of Mark. Dear friends, let me read to you chapter 16. The verses are 15 down to 16. Again, the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Once again, dear friends, we would like to emphasize first that the Lord Jesus Christ gives us certain criteria that need first to be met, if you notice, before one can receive the grace of salvation. And among these criteria is the need for baptism. But again, we ask, who should be baptized? Well, based on what the Lord Jesus Christ said, those who believe or those who have genuine faith. Or have faith in the gospel. Yes. But the question is, how can one receive the gospel, we mean the genuine gospel. Well, we need to listen to the preaching of those who are true messengers of the Lord God, those sent out with the office, the responsibility of preaching, the genuine gospel, dear friends, recorded in the Bible. And of course, when it comes to that message, nothing should be added to it, nothing should be taken away from it, from the truth recorded in the Bible. So if one claims and believes that he has already received the, the true baptism, then all these ingredients, so to speak, should have been present. Yes. Friends, may we ask you, did you first receive the genuine gospel preached by a true messenger of the Lord? Did you first have faith in the message you heard before receiving baptism, genuine baptism? Now, in light of this, Brother Edwell, should infants be baptized in the true church? No, because we're sure that infants cannot meet the requirements mentioned in the Holy Scriptures for those who are candidates for receiving the true baptism. In fact, we can read from the Holy Scriptures what was done to infants back during the first century of the Christian era so that they too could partake of the kingdom of heaven even though they could not yet be baptized. And friends, we can read what that is. Here in the book of Matthew, once again, let me turn to chapter 19. The verses are 13 down to 15. Then little children were brought to him that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed from there. Infants, if you notice, they were not baptized during the time of the first century Christians. Instead, they were offered to the Lord God through a prayer 
spoken of in the Bible. And what was the value of that, Brother Edwin? Well, according again to what we read, and the Lord Jesus Christ Himself is the one testifying to us here. Friends, if you notice, it assured them of a part in the kingdom of heaven or of the grace of salvation. Of course, we all know that when the right time comes, then they can already receive the gospel. If they have faith in the gospel they received, they can then, at that time, receive the true baptism. And that is exactly what we do inside this church, the Iglesia Ni Cristo. Yes. Now, aside from what we have already mentioned to our friends and viewers, Brother Edwell, what else should be done first by those who will receive baptism? Well, the Apostle Peter tells us that those who will receive the genuine baptism, they should repent from all their sins. We can read about that in the book of Acts, of course. Dear friends, let me read it to you. Here in chapter 2, the verses, or rather the verse is verse 38. From the book of Acts. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Peter mentions another requirement, if you noticed, for those who want to receive the true baptism. Such should repent of their sins, such should turn away from sin. And our friends will surely agree with us when we say that an infant could never accomplish this requirement from or mentioned in the Holy Scriptures. Yes, because first of all, an infant does not yet possess any sin. He has not yet committed any sin and he cannot repent for sins. Now what else should be done by those who are repenting of their sins? Well, again, we go back to what the Apostle Peter said to the people back then. It's again recorded in the book of Acts. Friends, let me read to you chapter 3, the verse is 19 from the book of Acts. Repent then and turn to God so that He will forgive your sins. Those who are truly repenting of their sins, if you notice, according to the Apostle Peter, they should turn back to the Lord God, our Father in heaven, Brother Romo. On the other hand, Brother Edwell and uh, dear friends, isn't it true that you are already capable of uh, fulfilling these requirements mentioned in the Holy Scriptures? So among the first steps one should take is to ask, do I want to be counted as a true disciple of uh, the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, a true Christian? Do I recognize that I have also committed sin and that I also need to repent of and receive genuine baptism? Now, you may be asking, what can those who renew their lives and turn back to the Lord God, what can they hope to receive? Well, the Bible tells us that the Lord God is merciful. So if one truly repents of his sins, turns his back on sin, and returns to the Lord God, well, dear friends, that person will receive mercy from the Lord God. Let's read about that. It's recorded here in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. The verse is 7. Here's what the Bible says. Let the wicked leave their way of life and change their way of thinking. Let them turn to the Lord our God. He is merciful and quick to forgive. Those who leave behind their wicked way of life, well, when they return to the Lord God, the Bible tells us they will receive forgiveness of their sins or their transgressions. But what does the Lord God in return expect of them, those who have received the genuine baptism, those who have been forgiven of their sins? Well, the Apostle Paul tells us what is expected of those who were forgiven of their sins, received genuine baptism, repented, and turned their backs on a wicked way of life. It's recorded in the book of Galatians. Dear friends, here in chapter 3, the verses 27, the testimony of the Apostle Paul. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Those who have been forgiven of their sins after receiving that true baptism, well, if you notice, the Lord God, speaking, of course, through the Apostle Paul, He expects them that they should already be clothed with the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior Himself. Clarification, Ver Edel, what does it mean that those who have received the genuine baptism have clothed themselves with the Savior, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, once again, to answer that question, we return to the Apostle Paul again in the book of Galatians. But this time, we read from chapter 2 to verses 20 of that book. Here is the testimony once again of the Apostle Paul. So that it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. This life that I live now, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave His life for me. 
When the Bible tells us that those who receive the true baptism should be clothed with the Lord Jesus Christ, well, what that means is that such people who already received the true baptism, well, the Savior is the one who now lives in them, in those who received that genuine baptism mentioned in the Holy Scriptures. And this is what a true Christian is like. He allows the mind of the Savior or the way of thinking of the Lord Jesus Christ to rule in his life. Yes. Friends, don't we want this grace or blessing for ourselves? But you may ask, how can those who have received the true baptism let the Lord Jesus Christ live in them? We will answer that question, but please watch first how Brother David Moore Jr. of Northern Virginia in the United States of America came to realize the great value of basing one's faith on the Holy Scriptures and thus decided to be baptized in the Church of Christ. I was started out as a Baptist and then I uh, migrated to a Catholic. I was born into the Baptist faith. Well, let's see, going from a Baptist to a Catholic, I uh, joined the Catholic faith primarily because at the time of my marriage, my wife was a member of the Catholic religion. And I wanted to have the same foundation with her. I must admit that I did not fully understand religion, although I read the Bible day and night many times, and I did not learn about the Bible until I became a member of the Church of Christ. It was one in particular that did not make sense to me. The fact that the priests always served the sacrament, but uh, at the time of the fruit of the juice of the vine, he did, he, uh, we did not receive of that, only he drank that. Because I had read in the Bible because of the Lord's, uh, last, uh, the Lord's Holy Supper that uh, this was not the way it took place that Jesus, in fact, took the bread and break it and he passed it around to each of the members and told them to eat this. And then when it came time to drink the fruit of the vine, he also passed the cup around for them to drink out of. And I was always wondering why the priest gave experiences rather than teaching from the Bible because I had read the Bible, although I did not fully understand it at the time. I, I did not understand it at the time. And it was later that I found out that uh, as I stayed in the Catholic Church for maybe three or four years, I said, well, why is he doing this? Why is he doing that? And why do we have to kneel down to this statue before we go into the worship service? And what is this holy water? What does it do? And I could not find answers to those, although I asked uh, fellow Catholic uh, members about it, and they didn't seem to understand either. Uh, I was uh, really called into the uh, Iglesia de Cristo about 10 years ago. I met a co-worker who introduced me to a God's Message magazine and he asked me to read this and to come back to him within two weeks and ask, it, and ask what did I think about it. So as I read the magazine, I compared it to what the verses were in the Bible and they, were, they matched exactly the same. So uh, I uh, returned to my co-worker and I told him that I thought it was very interesting. I said, where did you get this from? And he said, uh, are you interested further in, the, in, in, uh, in other parts of our church? I said, oh, this is a part of a church. I said, what is the name of the church? And he told me the Church of Christ. Had I ever heard of it? And I recall uh, sitting in the uh, worship services and my knees were always trembling. And I, I, I wondered about that after I left. I said, well, I wonder why every time I go into this worship service or this private home, why is it that I always tremble like this? And I always listen, I paid attention. And uh, that is what boosted me. But after I was baptized, I became stronger in knowing that, I said, that trembling could be strength. And that's what I needed at this particular time.
I do believe, Bear Edwell, that our friends out there would like to hear some of your thoughts regarding the feature we presented to them. Well, the same thing is true not only of Brother David, but of so many members of the church who, before they became members, they believed, for example, that they could live their life, they could conduct their life according to whatever they wanted. But a time came when they were convinced that we do need to submit to the will of the Lord God, and His will is recorded in the Holy Scriptures. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what we do inside the Church of Christ. We teach people only the doctrines recorded in the Holy Scriptures, and this is what we obey. This is the basis of our faith, our services to the Lord God. Brother David proved this for himself. So many other members of the Church has or have already proven this for themselves also. And that is exactly the reason Brother David decided to receive baptism here in this church, the Iglesia de Cristo. Yes. And that leads us back to the question we left before we took a break, Brother Edul. How can those who have received the true baptism, of course, inside the true church, let the Lord Jesus Christ live in them? Well, we go to the Apostle Paul. He's, he testifies as to how that can be. It's recorded in the book of Romans. Friends, let me read to you chapter 6. The verses are 3 down to 6 of the book of Romans. For surely you know that when we were baptized into union with Christ Jesus, we were baptized into union with His death. By our baptism, then, we were buried with Him and shared His death, in order that just as Christ was raised from death by the glorious power of the Father, so also we might live a new life. For since we have become one with Him in dying as He did, in the same way we shall be one with Him by being raised to life as He was. And we know that our old being has been put to death with Christ on His cross, in order that the power of the sinful self might be destroyed, so that we should no longer be the slaves of sin. Before we can begin to put on the Lord Jesus Christ, well, according to the Apostle Paul, we need to put off something first. And what is that that we need to put off? The Apostle Paul says it's the old self. In other words, we need to let the old self or the old being, which was, according to what you just read, destroyed by sin, be buried through baptism. Yes, and only then can we begin to put on the Lord Jesus Christ or allow Him to live in us. Now, inasmuch as genuine baptism signifies the burying of the old self, how then should genuine baptism be administered? Well, in order to answer that question, to clarify it, we need to go to this instance of when baptism was done during the first century. It's recorded in the book of John, chapter 3. Friends, let me read to you verse 23. Now, John also was baptizing in Anan near Salim, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. What I've just read to you is an example of baptism conducted by the early servants of the Lord God. In this case, for example, John the Baptist. How did John the Baptist conduct baptism? He did it through immersion, and it's the same way that the early Christians did baptism. Can we side proof for that? Because others might think that we are just presenting or giving our own interpretation to what is written in the Bible because, and they might even say and argue with Edwell that what is written in the Bible is that there was much water in the place where John the Baptist conducted baptism, but it is not stated in the Bible that John the Baptist conducted baptism through immersion. And they might even say, well, it is fallacious or it is wrong to say that the proper way or the correct manner of baptism is through immersion. Well, back then, the early servants of the Lord God were also conducting baptisms. And we can read of an example in the book of Acts. Here, dear friends, in the book of Acts, chapter 8, the verse is 38. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he immersed him. Friends, what I have just read to you is another example of baptism done during that period of time. This time conducted by Philip on an Ethiopian official, a eunuch, who wished to become a Christian after hearing the truth about the Savior, about the Lord Jesus Christ. How did Philip baptize the Ethiopian eunuch? Well, it's very interesting that you mm -hmm. ask that. Dear friends, if you notice, they both went down into the water, which is why, again, much water is needed. And did you notice? The Bible tells us Philip immersed him. He immersed 
that Ethiopian official. So it's not our own opinion or personal view when we teach that the right manner or the correct way of uh, performing genuine baptism, it is through immersion. Yes, and dear friends, that is how we are inside the Church of Christ. All our doctrines are based purely on what the Holy Scriptures, the Bible teaches, including the doctrine concerning conducting baptism. But the problem is so many churches today, Brother Edwell, so many religions today also perform baptism uh, through immersion. So the question is, how can we identify the genuine baptism that truly leads a person to be included among the true disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ or among the true Christians? And another question, Aside from the manner of uh, performing baptism, which is through immersion, where can we find those who have received genuine baptism? Well, in the book of 1 Corinthians, in chapter 12, friends, in the verse 13, this is the answer to that question, the testimony of the Apostle Paul. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. Those who received the true baptism by immersion, of course, according to the testimony of the Apostle Paul, they're brought together into just one body. Which is this one body where we can find those who have received the genuine baptism? It's none other than the true church, of course, the church or the body headed by the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're basing that on what's recorded here in the book of Colossians 1 and the verses 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. The one body is the true church. And it is inside this true church where we can find those who have received that genuine or that true baptism. And we're sure, Brother Edel, that this is the question uh, asked by our friends and viewers. Why should one who is baptized be a part or be a member of the church headed by the Lord Jesus Christ in order for that person to be assured of receiving the grace of salvation? Well, again, we go back to what the Apostle Paul said in the book of Ephesians this time. Dear friends, let me read to you chapter 5. The verse is 23. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and He is the Savior of the body. Dear friends, we hope none of you make the mistake of thinking that the church or the body is the Savior. No. The Lord Jesus Christ is still the Savior whom the Lord God will send on the day of judgment. However, it is the one true church or the one true body that the head or the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, is going to save. So anyone who desires to be saved on the nearing day of judgment ought to strive to be a part or member of the true church, which is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, Brother Edel, what is the name of the true church headed by the Lord Jesus Christ and to which those who have received the genuine baptism belong? Well, the Apostle Paul, he mentions the name. For example, here in the book of Ephesians, here in chapter 4, dear friends, the verse is 12, the Apostle Paul testifies as to the name of that true church. The common object of their labor was to bring the Christians maturity, to prepare them for Christian service and the building up of the church of Christ. The true church is called after its head. It's called the church of Christ. And dear friends, it's inside the true church of Christ where those who receive the true baptism, well, they can be found. It's inside this one true church where those who have been taught the genuine gospel, have repented of their sins and are now true disciples of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's here where they can be found. Friends, may we ask you, do you also want to receive the genuine message of the gospel? Do you also want to be included among the true disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, true Christians? And do you also want to be forgiven of your sins and have the assurance of the Savior to partake of the grace of salvation on the nearing day of judgment? If so, let us exert our every effort to look for the true church headed by the Lord Jesus Christ. And upon finding that true church, listen to the pure words of the Lord God preached by true preachers. Have faith in them by adhering to the genuine message of the gospel and then accept the genuine baptism. Let us pray. Our most gracious and most compassionate Father in heaven. Yes, Father. 
Thank you so very much for giving us this opportunity. Yes, Father. So once again, be guided by your holy words yes, Father. recorded in the Holy Scriptures. Amen. May you please bless our hearts and souls. Yes, Father. Especially that of our friends and viewers. Yes, Father. Please add to them not only the understanding that they need, yes, Lord. but most of all the faith and conviction they all the more need yes, Father. so that we may all be joined together in receiving the genuine baptism yes, Father. inside the true church of Christ yes, Father. and also perform the right manner of worshiping your most holy name yes, Father. and be saved on the day of judgment. Amen. Lord Jesus, please once more speak to the Father in our behalf yes, Lord. and forgive us for all our sins and misdeeds. Amen. Father, once again, we come before you. Yes, Father. We ask for all these blessings only through the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.